Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. This is pre-release 1 for 1.17 and pre-releases they're like snapshots with less content in them. However this one I'd say has actually got a fair bit of interesting stuff in but it also means that we're getting real close to the release of 1.17. Now if you are looking for a refresher I want to mention that I've made a tier list video where we go through all the things in the update one by one and I also uploaded a recent episode of Myth Busting where we investigated the new mobs added in 1.17. So both those videos will be linked at the end of this one because we want to get into the pre-release and over here on the website it says from now on you should mostly see bugs being fixed. In addition to that Pre-releases don't follow the regular snapshot cadence of releasing on Wednesdays, so keep an eye out. So you're probably wondering, what does that mean? This update has been split into two halves, and the second half is just going to continue being developed. So while we see pre-releases for 1.17, we're probably going to see more snapshots for 1.18. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch all of those snapshot videos. Anyway, let's get into it. There have been some new advancements added related specifically to 1.17. So you can get an advancement from applying wax to a copper block. That one is called wax on, and you've also got one for getting rid of it called wax off. Catch an axolotl in a bucket and you'll get an advancement called the cutest predator. There is then an advancement for taking on a hostile mob with your axolotl and killing it. However, I haven't seen this one rewarded yet. However, this is what it would look like. The Healing Power of Friendship, that's the name. Is it a bird? Is it a balloon? Is it a plane? These are the three advancements that you can get for looking at a parrot, a ghast, and an ender dragon through the spyglass. This next one is called Surge Protector, and it's for having lightning strike near a villager without setting them on fire. Well, I turned that one into a witch. <laughs> well, that was unlucky. Let's try this again. Ah, uh, <laughs> well I got it, but the villager did get set on fire. Let's now walk on some powder snow with our leather boots equipped. This one should give us a light as a rabbit. This next advancement also emphasizes a new feature of this pre-release. So we're going to use some glowing on these signs. And look at that, there is now a glowy layer around the outside of the text to really make it pop. That is a very welcome change. Look at that, that's practically neon right there. And in the daytime they are also very powerful. I think that's a really good change, it just helps them pop out a little bit more. I like this change, what do you think? And the last new advancement involves a boat and a goat and it's called whatever floats your goat. Come on, come on, there we go. You have to get in the boat with the goat to get the advancement. And there it is. And now for the technical changes, and there are a lot of them. These are mostly though triggers that are new and changed and predicates that have been changed as well. This is all related to the advancements that you just saw. And essentially it means it's opened up to customization for people who want to use commands and data packs and the like. Pressing F3 and Q in game brings up the debug list on the side. It's now alphabetically ordered and there is a new one which is F3 plus L which I believe replaces something similar that we had in a previous snapshot. This will do some profiling where it gathers metrics of all the things that are going on in the game and puts them into a report. What happens here though is that it automatically stops after 10 seconds and then gives you some information. If you press F3 and L and then press it again, when you press it it will end the process earlier than those 10 seconds. And at the same time as this, there is now a equivalence for on a server, you can use performance start and performance stop and it will work the same way around running a 10 second analyst of all the things that are going on on the server. So what about those candles that were recently removed from this update? They appear to be back and that is right, they're actually back in creative and survival mode. This appears to be a parity issue with Bedrock as Bedrock is going to receive an additional update after 1.17 drops to add candles in. So yeah, it's coming to Bedrock as well just a little later on. So yes, it's back in the game including all of the recipes and there's supposed to be a change regarding how they look when they are lit. Ooh, yes. Yes, the actual texture of it changes. It becomes more luminous. It's quite obvious on there because there's a bit of a color change. 
Ah, look at that. It's actually different based on the model size as well, right? This one did not have that effect. Actually, that's a different color, isn't it? We've got two very similar ones here. Let's actually go ahead and see all of these change one by one. We're sort of zoomed in here, so we've got a nice big focus on the texture itself. Yeah, they're all just a little bit lighter, really. That is a nice change, though. It sort of reflects the fact that the light... Oh, look at that one. Hmm, decided to throw some orange in there. Same for that. I guess maybe they've taken the, the tint color of light and applied it to what's below. Because, yes, yeah, some of these become very orangey and that one yellowy. Very cool. It also doesn't seem to change based on the amount that you have in the group. Yeah, and also, I didn't know this, but you can actually add them when they're lit and they stay lit. Okay, there is a change to the end credits of the game, which we are now about to see. The change is that you can hold down spacebar to increase the speed of it. You can tell just by looking at that when I'm holding down spacebar and when I'm not. If you knew it or not, you can walk around on the Amethyst blocks and they make these beautiful, pretty sounds. Now, some mobs in this game were not able to do that. I don't know if that included a zombie, but now when other mobs walk across these blocks, they too will make sounds. Now, here's a change that I almost missed by trying to put leaf blocks inside of flower pots. What you can do is put the flowering azalea and the azalea bush or whatever we're calling these in them and that is a gorgeous little decoration right there. I, I, I really like that. Now, there were a lot of bug fixes in this pre-release, and there are only really two I thought were worth talking about. One of those is just a fix for tinted glass where liquids could complete, appear completely dark on the downside here. So, like, this texture would have just appeared black, and uh, now they appear correctly. And, like, we recently saw a fix for Amethyst Geodes not being able to generate in these... End portals, ruined portals, the ones that take you to the nether, could actually generate through these and break them, and that'll no longer happen. Now, somehow I totally missed this from the last snapshot, but the number down here for light has been moved up to the top corner. The icon has been changed as well, and now each of these have their own unique icon, as you can see, if you just look at the hot bar. A couple of them, I think, get repeated as the numbers go up, like those ones look rather similar, and yeah. There it is, all the way up to 15. I also completely misunderstood this mechanic from the last snapshot. I thought it was related to the hanging roots actually being on the block, but the deal is if you right click on one of these, you will get some of those hanging roots, but it doesn't have to have any below. It's just, uh, just a feature of converting rooted dirt into dirt. It will give you some of the hanging roots. And the other misunderstanding that I had was with the cave vinyl or the glowberry, it can now be pollinated by bees. I thought it worked the other way around, that they could fly to it and then pollinate. No, what they'll be able to do is speed up the growth of this plant. And so, my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it, and if you haven't seen the videos I mentioned at the beginning, they'll be linked on the screen and in the description box down below, so go check them out. Otherwise, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with another one. Bye-bye.